Yo, you know what it is. It's your boy DJ Filthy Rich. Yeah, it's your boy DJ Big X. What's happening? Smooth. I'm drinking good nigga water. That's right. This is the We Outside Show, and we got our special guest in the building tonight, the one and only Lil Zane. What up, what up, what up? Yeah. What up, what up, y'all? Hey, man, I'm not even calling you Lil Zane. You grown now. It's the big one. Big, big Zane, Zane oh, yeah. in the building, man. We just did that to Scrappy. Now yeah. Big Zane is in the building, man. Nah, man, my dad, Big Zane. You know Big yeah, Zane. Yeah, I, I, I know Big Lil Zane, Zane is, yeah. That Lil Zane is life I live now. It's life I live, Zane. So the L-I-L, I, I just put the dot, the dot in the middle, you know what I'm saying? It's life I live, Zane. I live that life, you know what I'm saying? That's right. I like that. So speak of living life, you just got killed on BMF, man. Yeah, man. We open, we gotta open up more. We know what I'm saying we celebrating the life of Saki. Everybody toast to the yeah, life man. of Saki. Yeah. Yeah. Saki man. Celebrating the life of Saki, Saki baby. Man. And he kept it G the whole yeah, time. Yeah, man. You know kept it G, man. Solid, man. Shout out to my man 50, man. Shout out to Ian. Shout out to everybody. Randy. Everybody on the all the, the whole cast. That, that show is crazy. It was a great opportunity, man. So you had a nice little run on, on the show too. Yeah, I was supposed to be on one episode. Oh wow! So, so you, when you turn, when you when you when you twerk it to 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 you did a whole season, and yeah, another two season. two seasons. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like from one episode to what 13, 14 episodes, you can't beat that, right, yes, sir? You know? That's dope. And they talk about spinoffs, and I'm just waiting for the call. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, in that's meantime, dope. In the meantime, we just in between time, just enjoying the enjoying the fact that. You were part of history again, cause we know how crazy that right. show was. I mean, we know how crazy it was in real life when they was running around running Atlanta. the streets. So yeah, to to play in BMF and to be a part of it all over again, like and see it in TV form, it was it was a blessing off the top. You know what I mean? So how was it like being on the set with the family? Cause a lot of those guys are like, you know, I don't know if a lot of them are out, but I know a lot of them probably that are out was on the set. Um, no, nah, it was um, it was a few of them that was out that was on the set. You know, um. But it was definitely cool. It was it was like being able to really, if you didn't know the story, they was there to tell you, nah, this is how we did it. You know what I'm saying? Boom. But of course, a couple things were was made up just to yeah, hide entertainment it. for TV, for entertainment. Right. But yeah. most 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 for most part, you know, you had people like you know Big Mike, people that was there and was able to really just put that realness to it. Mm. You know, if you wasn't there, so it was dope. So has, right. as far as the. Uh, the Lamar character, right? He is the one who killed you. So <laughs> I know that's uh, my guy. It is. He's probably like the best villain out right Shout now. Shout out to Lamar, man. Shout out to Lamar. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I watched an a interview with the guy who he was based on. And okay. what you, you know, he was saying, you know, obviously it's TV, so everything's not going to be accurate. But right. with you being a part of the show, did you learn some things as far as reality? And, you know, like his character is so out there because of TV, but. Did they talk like, yo, there really was a Lamar out there and he was really getting to it like that? Nah, it was it was really a, it was talks there was really a Lamar out there. You knew that. I mean, he was definitely we knew that he was still alive and yeah. moving around. So I don't think I ever I don't think I seen him on the set. But if I seen him, I wouldn't, you know. I don't think he would have went there. I don't think he would have went there. I don't think he's yeah. that cool, you know what I'm saying? But um but yeah, I thought it was just cool how they was able to still, you know. Bring that, bring that element to it. But yeah, they would tell us stories about him and how how it was crazy and how they he, he was he was applying that pressure. But they was applying the pressure right back. Though you see them fifty boys, they ain't running from nothing. Right. You know what I'm yeah. <laughs> they, we weren't running from nothing. <laughs> so the acting thing suits you, bro. Like you look real comfortable with it. You, you seem yeah. like you was having a good time. Do you have plans to keep? Obviously, you probably do have plans to do some more projects. You have anything that you oh, can yeah. talk about? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, first of all, I got projects out since then. Since I did BMF. I was in um, Gutter. That's on Tubi. Um, I got, Tubi, I know, got, um, <laughs> I, I love Tubi. I got like six movies on Tubi. See? <laughs> that way they don't know. People don't know. I got like six movies on Tubi right now. I got Gutter. I got um, Boxed In with Regine Carter. Mm -hmm. You know that's on Tubi and on Peacock. Okay. Um, I got um, The Bottom. I'm a producer on The Bottom, and I star in The Bottom. It's a web series, four episodes. That's on um, Tubi. Um, I'm in Mason. I'm starring mm -hmm. in Mason on Tubi. Um, I can keep going. Um, I'm, what else? I'm forgetting something on Tubi, but I know. Oh, I'm in Love by Chance. Okay. Love by Chance, Foolish Love, After Autumn. You know what I'm saying? It's a couple. Like, I've been working, man. That's yeah. a lot, bro. You know so, what I'm saying? So we just fast forward to 2023, right? So now yeah. I got to rewind the tape. We got to yeah. rewind the tape. Yeah. Because now I got to let people know, like, how you kind of got here. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Now, when I met you, I know you had to be what, maybe five, six years old. Man, I had to be like when you met me. Honestly, bro, I was probably like 
10, 11. Okay. I yeah. know you was real young. Yeah. But you was in a group with your cousins, uh, Eric. Right. And, and I forget, the, was it your brother? Yeah, I was in a group called Chronic with my brother and my cousin. My brother, um, Bay Boy, and my cousin, Double E. Yeah, so yeah. when I met them, they came in. It was like like it was a group. This was around the time like when the kid groups was really big and right. you guys was going to be the next big kid group out of Atlanta. Right. They were signed to like RCA and I had the honor of working with you guys then and back then you was y'all was like like real kids in the studio. Real and to kids. see you go from being uh an emerging rapper during that time and the next time I seen you, you was on TV. Right. So it kind of fucked me up cuz I'm like how did he go from rapping right to TV? Right. How did you do that? Well, first of all, I was in the middle of, I was working with y'all, working with Dallas Austin. That's what a lot of people don't know. I was working with Dallas Austin, mm -hmm. Eric Sermon, you, Too Short. Mm -hmm. I was in the mix of all the greats over there, Buster. As, as a kid. As a kid. Mm -hmm. I was a, y'all raised. It's a hell of a lineup. <laughs> yeah, y'all raised me. Like, Too Short used to write for us. Biggie used to write for us. Like, we was, we was, we was, we yeah. was them guys as kids. So, um, in the middle of, you know, trans that transition from being a kid to, being about 17 before anywhere came out I decided to um jump into theater mm -hmm. and I jumped in a play I went and audition for this play and they took me on the road with them for like five months and um that's how I caught the acting bug so so you so you had some like you wanted to be a like you know, I wanted to be an actor I just um I just didn't know where to go and then one day I saw um I saw I was downtown on Monroe on Monroe mm -hmm. down P not down Midtown Monroe and Piedmont right. and I seen a little audition on the wall on the um, pole that said um, auditioning for for a play and I just took the bus down there I was like 13 14 I took the bus down there and I auditioned and um, dude was like how old is you I'm like 14 and he was <laughs> like man it wasn't no part for me but he wrote me in right because he just liked my hustle you know what I'm saying wow. he wrote me in he had no he gave me a monologue to do. He said, go do this, go learn this monologue, come back and um, do it for me and I'm, I'm gonna show you. And I came back and I did the monologue and he was like, yo, all right, we're gonna take you on the road. So he wrote me in. That's how I caught the acting book. Like ever since then, it was just fun. I got some money doing it. I was able to cut school and you're not cut school, <laughs> but my, I got a pass to get out of school to right. go on tour and do it. So I was like, oh yeah, that, that, that so, was fun. But, but as a kid, you was on some big shows during that yeah. time too. Like yeah. you, as your adolescence growing up, you know, like you was on like what one, what was it called? One for, oh, one on one. One on one. Yeah, one on one. Yeah. Um, I was on one on one, the Parkers. I did um, yeah, one on one, the Parkers. I can't remember. Like you had a nice like, kid I, run yeah, too, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like that's why I said. Yeah. Seeing you now as a grown up, you know what right, I'm saying? Now, right. like you said, Big Zane. Right, you know right, right. Big Z. Big yeah, Z. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? yeah. So for me, I was just amazed to just see you walk into that light, bro. Like I said, I, I really see the, the the acting bug in that. Like even today when I talk to you now, I see the entrepreneur in you. You see yourself, you know dog. So, I always <laughs> tell people, y'all raise me. I swear to God, I do. I'm not just saying that on your show. Anybody that know me, I'm like, Dallas X man, when I see, that's why when I see, I give you that respect. Like, I could talk to you like this. Like, right. I was even telling my people, I was like, yo, when you call my man back. No, this like my family. Like, this like my big bro. Like, I'm going up there anyway. I'm just trying to get the nigga to. <laughs> yeah, you know I'm supposed to put you anyway. But like, she put, can tell you I said yeah, that. Like, nigga put that pressure down. He know how to put the pressure. Yo, on. nah, on but I, I, but I, but I was like, but he knew, but I knew, bro, understood. Like, he pushing this water like hard, so you can't knock that. You right. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it wasn't like I was asking for that. I was like, yo, I'm trying to get my waters on there, yeah. man. Like, so, but I always tell people, you raised me, man, Dallas. Um, I ran into Dave Gates recently. You know what I'm saying? And um, I really give it up to people that. That that brought me up, you mm. know what I'm saying. Any conversation I have, even K Wells, you know what I'm saying. I, I keep it 100. Yeah, like, that's my guy. He out you know of Dallas what I'm saying? too. Yeah, and that's you know. So that's not my guy like that. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? But that's definitely you got. You can't erase history. You right. know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. It's something you can't take away. Yeah. So and I respect that and I appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? And um, but I always tell people when you when you look at them and you look at Dallas and y'all still Dallas and movies. Look at you right now, podcast. <laughs> Out here hustling, you got that Monday, that Monday, you doing Sunday every Monday. So it's like we just come from that cloth where we hustle. It's like, yeah. well, we, but it's like I tell, I tell everybody, you know, you have to, you have to do, you have to develop uh, some type of work ethic. And right. I think what you've seen, what you learned from all of us was we stay working, we stay active, we stay trying to do right. something, trying to break down a door so that we can bring people through it. You know what I'm saying? So even when you see it, even when I'm looking at you now, like you got the water, we're going to talk about, let's talk, let's talk about the water. 
Let's talk about so it. So tell me about the water. Tell me about your whole, your, your, your step into entrepreneurship. Man, I'm chill. I'm kicking it with my girl one day, man. I drink a lot of water. I run. People don't know I run five miles a day. You know what I'm saying? I work out every day. You know, I just stay on it. Like, even when it wasn't, nothing was popping, I always just try to stay ready. Like, if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I was drinking a lot of water, and she was like, yo, I wish I could drink water like you with all this, because she drank wine. I was like, trick yourself and put the water in the wine bottle. Mm -hmm. And I walked off, and I turned around and was like, that's it. That's it. What I'm going to call it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, uh, uh wine. Cause it's like wine, but it's not water. It's not. It's water, but it's it, it's in a wine bottle. So unwind. So that's all it is. Just the name first, the packaging, and you know, I just really wanted to just. I seen Fifty just go crazy with the water. Mm -hmm. I'm working with Fifty, so I'm just like, you know what? Let me try this water this water thing out. So when you say in your brain, I'm gonna start a water company. Who do you even call? You know what I'm saying? That was the thing, man. Like it took me a minute. I had this water company for like two years now. And it just took me, just it took me and my partner a lot of research, you know what I'm saying, just to really like, just to find the bottles and the company that do the bottles, the company that do the label. Then no company, the people that did fill your bottles up, they didn't want, they wanted me to use their bottles, and I wanted to use my bottles, cause that's the whole thing of it, like, you know. So, you know, I just went through a lot of that. I went to a point where I was just sterilizing my hands and going to like going and buy thousand dollars, thousands of dollars worth of alkaline water and pouring it in bottles and just bottling it and selling it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So then I end up running up on a water source. Mm. And then I say, yo. Change the game. That's it. Can you, can you do these bottles like this? Put them through your machine? He's like, yeah, I got you. I said, oh yeah. <laughs> and bam. You know what I'm saying? Now I got like a thousand cases. These sizes, these sizes, I got four, four sizes. You know, we're trying to do deals with Marriott. We're trying to do deals with um, Delta. We 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 in LA Fitness right now. We in hella, um, like 31, 31. Um, by the end of April, we'll be in 31 clubs, restaurants, and cigar bars in Atlanta. Okay. So this is going to be like. It'll be in the hookah lounge. Yeah, this is going to be in the hookah lounge. It's like the upper <laughs> It's like the upper echelon of water. You know what I'm saying? It's the upper echelon of water. Like, you got the Fiji's, you got the Vosses, but unwind is alkaline. It's natural spring water. So, it's another, fly. so, so to break it down, I'm, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm pulling your leg. Yeah, know? yeah. So you got the $8 water in the club. Man, yo, you know what? This go, this, <laughs> this, this in the club, I ain't going to lie. This come with sparkles out on it. You know what I'm saying? When you order this, it come out with sparkles. So it's like, Not even these bottles go from any anywhere from like 12 to 20 in the club. These okay. go these might go for like anywhere from 5 to 7 in the club. Most clubs I sell them to they be they like they they go for like 7 8 bucks cuz people like alkaline. $8 water. You know and that's Atlanta too. <laughs> you go somewhere else it might be different but Atlanta, you know, we tax out here. Uh man, it's taxation. So, yeah. so Black Hollywood. Guys. You know what I'm saying? But I don't I don't sell them for $8. If you come to me, you get a wave. If you come straight to me, on my website, unwindessentials.com, you know what I'm saying? Plug. Unwindessentials.com. You know, you could get them straight from me, and you can go through all that, and then you can sell them for what you want to sell them for, like, you know? You know what is kind of fly about that? I'm not going to lie, though. I, I see it in the club, right? Because you yeah. got a lot of people like athletes yeah. or, you know. Oh, this is the new thing. This is what the athletes, the, the yeah. rappers, the everything yeah. drinking. Let me, like let, drinking. let me pipe up a little bit, man. Well, I don't, don't think y'all understand what's pipe going on. Shit. Like, cool. yeah, this for up. us. This yeah. for us right here. Like, let me pipe up. Like, this really for us. Like, you got me talking about my water now. Like, this for us. Like, this the new wave. You know what I mean? Like, you want to drink. Because I don't, cause I remember not really liking to drink water. It's just fly away to drink water. Your chick going to like it. It's refillable. You can keep the bottle whether you want to. You know, it's a glass, plastic. And I feel like this is elegant. Like you want to see this in the, you yeah. Get them, you get them little waters when you go in the when you get your suite at the hotel. Yeah. And they had them little nasty little whatever. <laughs> yeah. Even Man, touch them. You don't even want to touch them. Nah. But imagine if you came in, they had this on the table. But you got. But I, this is how I envisioned it from a marketing standpoint. You got to yeah. make the guy that don't drink look fly in the club. And that's too. it. That's what I'm saying. Like it. the athletes the who don't drink. The designated driver right. got this. That's why I said it come mm. out with sparkles. Yeah. Every Hennessy bottle you order, come out with a sparkle. Every uh, come out with a wine bottle. That's the club. That's the deal I do with the clubs. Like when I'm in the club, if somebody order a Hennessy bottle, make sure you get them one of these with it, and they come out with the sparkles. Then you got that girl that's like, "Baby, what's that?" 
they go to thinking some vodka and they drink and they like, oh snap, this water. Mm-hmm. And I was thirsty. And I was yeah. thirsty. <laughs> well, it is, but it then is. if they need the vodka, here, we yeah. got the vodka. We got the seven twelve vodka. Yeah. So know? tell me, so so when tell your us, pregnant girlfriend come to you to the club that first three four months, she got right. something she can flex. Right. <laughs> she in there, she yeah. sipping it, she still feel cool, like. The water's yeah. good. She feels. What y'all think about the water? Y'all tried it? Nah, yeah, yeah, I like yeah, the water. Yeah. It's cool. But you know what I like even more with my alcoholic ass? The vodka. The vodka. Yeah, seven twelve. Now baby. this vodka is really smooth. Like now, I want y'all to. Can we get some more cups? Like four cups where they could just take a shot. <laughs> I'm on my fourth I'm, shot. I'm, I'm, <laughs> he like, oh, no, 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 he okay, like, so he look, on his so fourth look, shot already. Don't mix nothing with it though. This yeah. this vodka smooth. Nah, no, 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 Feels he don't mix. He he's straight. Okay, so you see yeah, that straight no chaser. Like, I'm down to it. Just pour that, pour, pour that little. Pour that in there, man. And uh, hey, look, my birthday seven twelve, right? My birthday seven twelve. I'm I'm, I'm tripping. Yeah. <laughs> my birthday seven eleven, right? Right. And on my birthday, I get wasted, right? Mm-hmm. But I'm never got a hangover because I'm drinking seven twelve. You feel me? Okay. You know what I mean? So it's the day Birthday after. It's that it's that vodka seven, that keep 12. you on the day. Yeah, seven eleven, seven twelve. Yeah. So it's like it's that vodka hours. that keep you just keep you right. Where yours at? I don't drink. You don't drink. drink. Yeah. Shout out to X for not drinking, man. Yeah. But even if you go I mean, drink, though, sobriety. if you nah, go drink, drink, though, X, you got you you can drink this because nah, I can't drink. I can't drink, drink it. Oh, I'm on. I'm on the. Un- right I'm on right. unwind. What you yes, think so. about the unwind? I'm gonna unwind. There you go. You I already drink alkaline water, so I, I like it. You but know see, what unwind. Let me let me let me explain this to y'all. Unwind is not just the water, though. It's it's a unwind is a lifestyle. It's a like I'm I'm opening up a store in the Avalon. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be an unwind store. You could buy water, but I'm I'm like the black bath and beyond. Mm-hmm. I sell candles, I sell incense, I sell sage, I sell water. See, I like that too. Bath, you, you, bath, bath robes, towels. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I'm about to Zane, be like that. It sounds like you sell a lot of shit to help nigga get some pussy. Man, listen, man, that's what <laughs> I do. Guy, I'm your I'm guy. I'm just gonna be real. I'm the guy. I'm the guy that always. I'm water. the guy that's not trying to sell you something, but I always got something to sell you. Right. Like dope sell so. You know what I'm saying? I know Two Chain said it don't. But it really do sell itself. Like once they know you got it, you know what I mean? It's like I ain't gotta just I put this water out there, but people start to call me for it now. Mm-hmm. Like, so, you know, I got a clothing line. You know, I ain't this not my clothing line, this one of my brands, but clothing line, established black, you know what I mean? So I'm selling, making money online. It's an online store, but I got some dope clothes on there, established black with a K.com. And um what else, man? Just so what? What, what drives you to be an entrepreneur? Because I see you got a lot of products. You got a lot of different avenues. I just like to reinvent down. myself over and over again. I like to have something different every time I come around. When you say you know re- when you say reinvent yourself, and I always talk about artists. I, I just posted that the other day on my page mm-hmm. about people reinventing themselves. What do you find important about being able to reinvent yourself? Just just being able to, you know, look back and say, yo, I've been doing something for this amount of time, but I'm still, your name's still ringing. You always got, like, you know, if you're not an asset, you're a liability. Right. So I want to be an asset in every situation. Mm. You know what I mean? Sometimes the asset could be the ideas. It could be the hustle. You know what I'm saying? It could be the, the music, whatever it is. Like, I conquered music. I conquered TV. I'm just trying to use all that that stardom and all that fame, cause this you don't everybody don't get this twice, three times. You you a witness. <laughs> I done got this shit, I done got this shit about three times. I don't think this shit for the stop. Like this shit just getting started. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So, but I was so young, I, I didn't know about creating, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You gonna give a nigga props, but you gotta be real too. K Wells, I dis I was the same nigga back then. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Same nigga with the same ideas. When you got a nigga holding you back and you can't get your ideas out, it become crazy. Yeah, but what you what, one thing I say about that era and that era then I just think a lot of times that was now niggas can't hold you back. Yeah, now you know niggas can't really now niggas can't hold you back. It's and, a play, it's an even playing field. But now you know exactly what you want to do. Back then I knew what I wanted to do back then, dog. Yeah, but you should have. Yeah. Did you voice it to him? And the niggas was trying to do it their way. You know what That's I'm saying? That's my point. They That's wait, but I respected that. He was in that gatekeeper. And I respected right. that, but I respected that. But at the same time, look how the niggas that did it let they niggas grow. Look how Wayne let Drake grow. Look how Birdman let Wayne grow. You got to let you got to let niggas grow and be a part of it. Because I got young niggas now that I done put in position. Look at the boos and the acons. Mm-hmm. I, ain't, I put them niggas on. I didn't hold them niggas back. Them niggas is billionaires now, dog. Mm-hmm. That love me and to do whatever I ask them to do. I ain't never broke, nigga. Them niggas love me, nigga. 
Mm. That's how niggas do. So when you say Boo and Akon, like what was your affiliation with them? I found Akon. I'm the nigga that niggas know Akon in Atlanta because of me. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I took Akon, got his first deal with Electra, and at 13, 14, was managing Akon. You know what I'm saying? Me and my dad, Big Zane, shout out to Big Z. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> now, listen, bro. And shout out that's, to Akon, that's too. That's news. my guy. That's news for me. You didn't know that? No. no. What, the, me, what you mean you didn't know that? No, we bro. outside. We know bro, that. I was 13, I know now. 14, I found Akon. I was on Plaster and Road I, on Beaufort Highway. Listen, I, I've been on Akon for a long time, but I didn't know you. You, you know. I was signed to was... RCA. I, I ran into me and Boo used to um, hit the same chick. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. okay. He, found, he, he found out she was cheating on me one day. He came to get me. You know what I'm saying? I went over to the dude house, beat the dude up. Call her in the house with him, and then he ended up just knowing I was a raw nigga. You know what I'm saying? He was like, hey, man, what you mean? My brother, man. That nigga rap. So mm. I rode my little bike down there, you know what I'm saying? So it was Metcon. That nigga was hard. Yeah. But I just knew he was hard, so I went back, and I, I told my dad. I'm like, hey, we got to sign this nigga. Like, he hard. So we signed him, but back then, Image was everything. They didn't know what to do with him. Mm. So he had a million dollars, and they didn't know, know what to do with him. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And then what happened was he um he got that million dollars. He put out a song called Operations of Nature, but he didn't really do shit. Mm. You know what I'm saying? He ended up getting locked up because we were stealing cars and shit. You know what I'm saying? He ended up getting locked up. So how he find um how did he find Divine? He find I introduced him to Divine. Okay. Because yeah. I see everything is still in the family. I'm just I introduced asking. him to Divine. Right. Yeah. And then when he got up, he got locked up, and that's when I started blowing up with 112. And by the time he got out, I was moving around. And he didn't have nowhere to stay, so he stayed with Divine in the back of Divine's studio. Mm. And that's how him and Divine ended up. Because that's when I really started locking in with Akon when he was in the back of Divine's yeah, studio in that little yeah. room. Shout out to Divine, yeah. too. Big homies. Yeah. Yeah. What's some other things that people may not know? Because that's a hell of a story, bro. Like, I ain't going to lie, Zane. That's you. not common information. I mean. I think. You've yeah. been in the game a long time. I've been in the game a long time, man. But I was young in the game like I'm young now. I right. came in young. Yeah. Forever. That's why I got a water coming out called Forever Young. Because it's like I came in young, I'm still young. It's like I'm one of the faces you finna see for the next 20, 30 years, dog. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you're going to keep reinventing yourself. So was you in the, uh, the Diddy Flavor Camp? Yeah, man. I used to write for Diddy. Yeah, you talk heavy. Write for Diddy. I'm talking my you shit. Do, you used to do what? I used to write for Diddy, nigga. What you mean? I got <laughs> checks. I still get checks from that shit. What you mean? Like, write, I used to write for Diddy. You know what I'm saying? Hey, Zane, to, if you don't know Shout out to Diddy. I love Diddy. Shout out to Diddy. Shout out <laughs> to shout out my dog, Corey Jacobs. He know it's real. The only, and I'm going to get the props where the props is. You know what I'm saying? Corey Jacobs. You know what I'm saying? That's with Diddy now. He was the one that always had my back. I and want the, you to understand. In the, in the, in the Buck and Kev situation. Rest in peace, Riz. Rest in peace, Wolf. You know what I'm saying? But in the Buck and Kev situation, like, Buck was always the one that had my back. Like, mm. always the one that was like, man, let that nigga live, man. You know what I'm saying? You had one nigga like, nah, I don't want him to get too much big because then he going to think he bigger than us. And the other nigga like, man, come on, man. Let's just nigga live, dog. Yeah. It was always a back and forth like that. Mm. That's why I give props what props is due. If, me, if Buck was running it before he got locked up, oh, we was it's been a whole nother story. Got you. But when Buck got locked up and it was just on him, it was more like I wasn't vibing with homie like that. Like, because mm. I'm not selfish. Right. Homie was real selfish. You know what I'm saying? So that's what happened to the worldwide part of it, the label. And then Zane jumped into acting and I just started becoming my own person, mm. meeting my own connects. Between, so, you know? so that was your. That was your exit from worldwide was when you I was my exit we just stopped talking I stopped calling him he stopped calling me you know what I'm saying mm. and then it's just like you know I moved to LA got away from everybody you know what I'm saying found some new management trying to do it myself right. you know what I'm saying now I'm out there now I done got a taste of the movie world so you was navigating out in LA what was that like navigating in LA doing like during that time right there we talking about what early 2000s Early 2000s, yeah, it's like early, it just happened so fast, like early 2000s, I uh, went to L.A., and I was just running around and got me an agent. I was in New York, though, when I first got my first big role, though, so went to New York. I was doing MTV, went across the street, went to McDonald's. I saw again, they was doing an audition. I always, I be looking, dog. <laughs> they was, I saw an audition, I, I saw a crowd, I saw a line full of niggas lined up, and I'm like, what y'all looking, what y'all lined up for, nigga? <laughs> and they already going crazy, because I'm Lil Zane, I'm performing Money Stretch mm. with me and Mandy Moore and Britney Spears mm. next door, you know what I'm saying? I'm huge, I'm huge, nigga, mm. so it's like, 
um, yo, what y'all doing? And he like, they like, yo, we got some movie. <laughs> I cut all 200 of them niggas. I went to the front. I'm like, look, I'm across the street doing this, but I'm trying to get in on this real quick. What's up? And they like, let me take you upstairs. Like, just like that. They took me upstairs. Dude gave me something to read real quick. And um, I read it for like five minutes. They came in and did that shit off paper. And then about a week later, they called me like, yo, I want you to play this role. Boom. God damn, so it's kind of like, like that. Four for four, ain't he? Yo, how I found yeah. K. Wells, like, I'm, like I said, I ain't. I still respect you, you know what I'm saying? Like, how I found K. Wells, I'm 12 years old. Remember, this is my intuition, dog. I always right. tell the same story. I was 12, I was 11, no, I was 11 years old. I'm riding, I'm riding in the car. I hear, come, I hear something come on the radio, say it's a talent show, and K. Wells going to be there and, you know, manager of ABC, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. All, I had all ABC shit, dog. I'm, I'm, I'm practicing. I knew every dance step. I'm like, I got to meet this nigga. So I tell my mom, I'm like, yo, ma, you got to sign me up for this the showcase. You got to mm-hmm. sign me up for the showcase, ma. She like, you tripping. She went to the barbershop. I went to the barbershop with her, the hair salon with her. Mm-hmm. My mom performed. My mom, while she getting her hair done, I start performing. Start performing. All the ladies in the in the in the in the spot start going crazy. So I'm like, man, tell her to sign me up. Mm-hmm. They said, sign them up. So she signed me up, right? I go in there and I win that bitch. Boom. Mm. They like, okay. Five for five. They say, they say, they say, <laughs> they say, okay, you win this one, but the last battle is for the deal with LaFace. And guess who I'm going against? Who? Usher. <laughs> oh, oh, hell shit. no. <laughs> so it's me and Usher. It's me and Usher. It's my group, Chronic. Five and one. My group, Chronic. You know what I'm saying? We known as KWA at this point. We kids with an attitude. I always wanted to be from the West Coast. Nigga. Yeah, kids <laughs> with an attitude. That was your I was name. all confused. I was born in New York, raised in Atlanta, but wanted to be from the West Coast. Because right. I was just, in my mind, I was the gangster's little nigga walking the earth. And you know, when we was around, we was we was hard, bro. Like, right. niggas out here acting like they was hard. I don't, I'm so chill now but we was them little niggas running around yeah. I was running around with illegal in them I was running yeah. around with Jamal back in the day oh, you know they was crazy yeah. you know what I'm saying so boom yeah I'm gonna get them on the show for real boom so let's go I just <laughs> boom so let's go back forever. boom so you know what I'm saying we do that you know what I'm saying we come from LA you know we it go from KWA is we we in the we in the final round of the talent show and it's us against Usher and how did that turn out Nigga, you know how it turned out. Nigga, nigga, you know how it turned out. <laughs> but let me tell you, one, let me tell you how they cheated though. <laughs> <laughs> That's the New York thing. Let me tell you how they cheated. <laughs> Yo, you know what I'm saying? So, okay. Now that New York so, nigga coming out. He's in there. Yes, yes. He's bring in the YO out of me. Yonkers listen, shout to Yonka. So listen. So listen, fam. Bam bam. Listen, fam bam. <laughs> done done. Yo, listen. So Usher performs. He goes scream because it's one of those things where they perform, we perform. So no, you're right. We perform first. Okay. We doing warm it up, Chris. I'm, I'm about, about to. to warm it up. What's Chris. this? What's this? About about to do. We at the Civic Center. Okay. Five thousand people, ten thousand people, bro. I got it on video tape. Oh shit. Right. Boom. We get screens. <sighs> so us should come out. He doing end of the, although we come to the end of the road. He come out there with that, right? I'm like, oh shit, this nigga done cheated. <laughs> he got the emotions. He him with the ballot. You he know, got, he the got him crying. The so then they say, all right, they bring us out. We the last final two. They is like eight people they bought out. Everybody got eliminated except for mm-hmm. me and Usher, right? Mm-hmm. My group and Usher. He sent me ushers, my group of usher. So they said, y'all give it up for KWA. <sighs> no, y'all give it up for usher. <sighs> y'all give it up for KWA. <sighs> usher win. Oh, the crowd say, oh. They <laughs> say, oh, we gonna do it again. We gotta do it again. They say, give it up for usher. <sighs> give it up for chronic, I mean for KWA. <sighs> Usher win. Guess who was hosting the show? Who? Usher manager. <laughs> AJ. AJ. Oh. <laughs> Usher. Uh, AJ is the fucking host. So they really did he cheat. Give him more, bro. Uh, you beat Usher, bro. I beat Usher. You beat Usher, dude. I beat Usher. <laughs> With no dances, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> nah, shout out to Usher. I just like to tell that story because it's funny. He deserved everything he fucking get. That's dope. But 
Come on, nigga. How many people can say they was up there battling back and forth for for Usher, bro? No, yeah. especially not winning for real. And nah. I was the leader of that group. I KWA. was the fucking Omarion of the group, nigga. It was a tie. Kids with that. Say it was, it a, was a tie. It was a tie. You can you can never say he truly, truly, truly beat me. <laughs> Why? Because AJ was the host? Because AJ was the host. That's like your mama <laughs> hosting the show. <laughs> <laughs> so did AJ pick the winner? Yes. Oh, that. Oh, shit. He yeah. said, Usher, Usher. Yeah. Oh, right, we got to do it again. He made him do it Usher, again. Usher, Usher. Yeah. Oh. Did, the, did the fire heart. Give the Usher. Because the, the show was for the LaFace deal. Damn. Oh, Yikes. wow. I mean, LaFace, LaFace did their thing. You know? I mean, they, they did a good choice, too, but... I'm still around right now too, so it wouldn't have been a bad choice either. If I would have had the backing, like the face, that like a nigga that just two niggas that just believed in him, and put him with the right people, he was signed on the face, but they sent him to Puffy. Mm. <laughs> he was signed to Babyface, mm. but they sent him to Puffy. Yeah, that first album he went. K. To Wells New York. wasn't sending me to nobody. He's like you ain't fuck with them niggas, dog. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, yo, a nigga didn't even want me to get a nigga number. But but to, but but took K Wells credit. He was a great artist developer though. He know, know the saying? best. You know what I'm saying? Like look I, in the I camera. Look at the camera. That. The best. But if niggas would have stayed doing that, like Marvelous Marvin, <laughs> niggas like that, that's really around, moving around right now, boom boom, because niggas really yeah. played that joint right. Yeah, Marv you know is my guy. Marv is, is is classic. He's like the guy. Classic. You know, bro. You know, like if you ever meet Marvin, Marvin is and he's still around now. Marvin is the guy who was I gotta like talk behind. My shit. I ain't trying like, to down uh, nobody, bro. But when people, I'm telling my story. Your truth Feel is Feel free, truth. K Wells, to come on here and tell your story, my nigga. Feel free. Right. Because at the end of the day, niggas fucked up millions, bro. See, I wasn't there. I can't. I can't comment on that. I know. I can. <laughs> <laughs> so Zane, let me ask you a question then, just to speak into that. Who was the first person that really did believe in you when you was in a situation? You was like, you first know what? Person that did believe in me was me, nigga. Out, me <laughs> outside of you, we know that. Outside That's because I said, listen, if you was running up on auditions God and did. doing all that, you and God. So nobody. I did the first. All right, so let me rephrase it then. Who's the first person that really? The first person put that, that believed in me for real. That believed in me. Outside the first person that believed in me. Yeah. K. Wells, dog. Okay. The same nigga I'm talking about. Yeah. Same nigga. Okay. Yeah. But how did guess, he show? But guess what? You want to know how I met him? Nuts. You want to know how I met him? Because the first talent show we did, we performed at. I was there to see him. The one I told you I heard on the radio. Right. They threw us on early. They threw us on early, and we performed and killed it. And I wasn't able to see him. We walking, my family walking. I'm sad as a puppy. Like, damn, I ain't get to see the nigga. I see a gold Benz go by. I see a gold Benz go by. I said, that gotta be him. That gotta be that nigga. Gold Benz. You don't even remember we had the gold Benz with the tent. Yeah. So you know I'm telling the truth. Yeah. I ain't lie yet, nigga. Boom. So gold Benz go by. I sneak off from my mom and pops. They all the way out. I snuck off. Ran up to the car, knocked on the door. Are you Kevin Wells? He like, yeah. I'm like, yo, I just performed. You missed me, but look, my group crazy. My group crazy with it. Like, take my number here, boom, boom. Call me. Mm. <laughs> Call me. I got some shit. That's a hungry that nigga, little nigga, man. That nigga <laughs> called me the next day, bro. Yeah. Came through. Bam. He like, who your favorite group? I'm like, ABC. Nigga took me to see ABC. Nigga, I walk in. I think it might have been here. Nigga at Crossover. Them <laughs> niggas rehearsing for their mic, for their tour. It's fucking crazy. You know what I'm saying? Bobby, Bobby Brown in studio. There. Every I, night. I recorded here in Bobby this, Brown. Bobby Brown studio. This is Bobby, 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 Bobby Brown, Brown studio first. They got first. a whole album together. What you talking about? Yeah, this is Bobby Brown studio first. Me and Bobby first. Brown got a whole album together. What you talking about? But the that Bobby Brown. Yeah, the, yeah, Bobby the real Brown, Bobby Brown. The real Bobby Brown. Like <laughs> big Bobby Brown. <laughs> yeah. Big Bobby Brown. Like shout out to Tommy. Shout out to Carolyn. Like. I got stories, bro. Like, I was the baby, but I was running around. I got probably like four, five, six songs with Bobby Brown. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Hey, this is my guy. You've been around for a I've minute. I've been around now. for a minute, but I was just a kid. But I remember all of this vividly, dog. Yeah, but but when this is why I, I have to say this in Kevin's defense because I, I know No, Kevin. shout out to K. We ain't bash your K, but nah. what I'm doing is. What I, I mean, it's your reality because, at the same cause, time. Because honestly, that's my dog, really. You can never take away. But it's like, it's like. People ask me what happened in that situation, and that's, to me, it's like, look, I always point the blame on myself first. When if you look at my BET interview, I say, yo, if I knew that, I wish I would have learned the business more. Right. That's taking the blame on yourself. Thanks. Right. But 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 I have to, what but, I was gonna say in his defense, though, I think at the same time, 
being that we all were young at that time. I was about to say, he was too. learning too. Yeah, we niggas it's, fuck it's, K, Niggas fuck K Wells over too. Yeah, so you got to think, man, everything during that time, even when I talked to Dallas. the same shit, bro. But but even when I talked to Dallas, everything during that time was a learning period for all of us. You know, know what I mean? Getting fucked up. <laughs> my artist is good. Like, you did what you supposed to do. I did what I'm supposed to do. We yeah. can't make excuses for niggas, bro. Niggas is 14 doing real shit, doing life, bro. Can't make excuses for niggas. But what I will say is, you know, niggas put you on, make sure they put you on. Like, right. You know, when Meek and Rick Ross was beefing, yeah, he put them on. He, but it's like, nigga, when it's a problem, it's a problem. It is. It yeah. was. You know yeah, what I'm but saying? But it's, 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 but it's not, but it's not, it's not no more because we grown. But if we're talking about the past, if you were sitting right here, I would say the same shit. Right. And he could defend himself too, but the paperwork show. You know what I'm saying? I had the man I had a manager publisher and the label was the same person. Ooh, why y'all niggas looking like that? Because we know Ooh. what that means. Keep defending that nigga, dog. <laughs> Keep defending the nigga, yeah. bro. Say something, man. You gonna sign to a management playbook and that's so that was the choice. Mm. That was the choice. So I knew what I was getting into and I said, yo, I'm gonna do it. I thought if I gave a nigga all that, a nigga was gonna wanna see me eat. That's the point of me giving you all that. So he can eat. If I eat, you eat. If you getting a part of everything, why ain't, why when you get 10 million, I ain't got at least two, three, four million on me, nigga? Mm. Something ain't adding up. The math ain't adding up, nigga. The math ain't mathing. And I'm a smart nigga at this time. I found you. You didn't come get me my dinner, nigga. I found you. I came and got you. When RCA, that deal that I, that LaFace won, that, that Usher won, Right the next day, RCA came and signed me, wanted to sign me. I went and got K Wells. Hmm. He didn't have to put me together. That was, um, in, was that Don over there with that caper? Yeah, Don. Okay. But I had that deal already in place. Hmm. I went and got K Wells and put him in that position to do that. I'm a kid doing this, dog. Yeah, that's fucking. I'm 12 crazy. years old. Nigga's supposed to be like this with me. It's my little nigga. Hmm. That's how Buck was before he got locked up. That's how Corey Jacobs was. Shout out to my nigga. I'll do business with him to this day. Okay. He running all puff shit right now because he was the brains, nigga. Mm. My nigga went and did. They they tried to give him life. He just, he out now. He did 17 and gave him back that shit. Those are niggas I'm trying to fuck with. Got you. You know what I'm saying? Like, niggas tried to give me life. I gave it back to K. Wells. Fuck that shit, nigga. I'm going to do fucking acting, nigga, until this contract over. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And now, but I like to give interviews like this because you get to be real. Yeah, true life, true life shit, bro. Like I said, I, I, can't, I don't even like I can't, doing interviews. Unless but I what I'm saying is, I can't even, I can't okay. even speak on his behalf. I, all I, I, I can do I, is just no, speak I'm on. Saying, no, no, I like, but I, I would like him to come do an interview, bro. You know what I'm saying? I would, oh yeah, you know, because he got you know, so now much that, game and insight. That, but why ain't you see all these legends doing interviews? Why don't you see the legendary Kevin Well, K Wells, do an interview? I mean, I just think you know he's he's K, bro. Oh, nigga, cause niggas gonna have stories. <laughs> <laughs> cause a nigga could call me out on anything if I'm lying. It wouldn't be you no know, Akon. It would still be an Akon, cause he the real. But Akon, if you go get Akon first album and say to Little Zane for giving me my start, nigga. That's okay. I ain't gotta make that. Nigga, up. now you gonna make me go and look at that. Go look at it. I'm gonna look at that go shit. I'm gonna it. look that shit up. For real. If you go get ABC's second album, I'm in there. Yeah, shout, I'm on out a, to, shout out to the Chronic, nigga. I'm yeah, in there. Yeah, That's I'm cool. on the second album, so. I fuck with ABC to this day. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I got the same friends since I was in elementary. Nigga, ain't nothing wrong with me. I'm loyal to the soil. I'm 7-Eleven right. cancer to the answer. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but if you playing foul, we got a style. You know right. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And a mile. You know what I'm saying? So he's still rapping. Yeah, yeah we still rapping. You know <laughs> so, what I'm saying? So... We got to take a break. Yeah. Take a break. Yeah. And then we're going to come back and talk yeah. about the music. Yeah, yeah. We ain't going nowhere. Look, yeah, you already know what Because all this is in the music. Oh, I yeah. I switched my style up. Niggas try to say I sound like pop. Now I got some, now I'm on some motherfucking just, oof. Like, it, it's crazy. I feel like you had a song with pop. We're going to, look, we're going to be back, Listen, man. We're going to pay these bills. We're going to be Unwind, right back. Unwind, baby. Unwind. Y'all getting the real Lil Z, man. That's what it is. Lil Z in the building. We outside. Show we'll be right break. back. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to everybody. Though.
Yo, you already know what it is. Your boy DJ Filthy Rich. We still outside with Lil Zane. Listen, man, this is a great interview. We talking heavy right now, but we want to switch gears because Let's switch gear. Hollywood has been amazing to you right now, man. Yeah, man. Uh, the acting bug is not even a bug no more. You kicking uh, Hollywood's ass. So outside of the acting, I want to hear about the behind the scenes things like the people don't talk about. Like you still, you a real nigga in Hollywood. I've yeah. been hearing about all, you know, you hear about all these crazy stories, man. Yeah, come stories. on, man. You hear the shit Paper Cat Williams check. be Paper talking work. about. You hear the shit Cat Williams. That's my nigga, too. Yeah, yeah. Cat, I got real stories about me and Cat. I got real stories, man. Like, I'm, I'm going to do a show called Down Memory Lane, you know what I'm saying, with Lil Zane. You know what I'm saying? <coughs> and and, and, and we're going to talk about stuff like that, too. I'll give y'all a little bit of it, but I got stories, man. You know what I'm saying? With me and Cat, everybody. What's some of the people that you really, really rock with? You, you know, Hollywood is I rock with fake. Cat Williams, you know what I'm saying? I really rock with, you know what I'm saying? Da Vinci, Meech, you know, like me and my cast members is really like the BMF cast. We really tight like that. Well, um, let me ask you about that. Because I, I heard it was some, like some resentment um, from Blue Da Vinci on the set. Like, you know, he didn't want to be a part of it. Or that's man. not the same Da Vinci. He's talking about the Da Vinci that plays Terry. No, I was talking about the Da Vinci that plays um, Terry. Okay. Yeah. Um, My bad. But that's crazy, though, that their names is the same. Right. That's, Yo, yeah, I thought that's, that shit that's, was so crazy. Because I know bro? Blue, too. Shout out to Blue, yeah, too. Blue I know my nigga. That's, you know what I know Blue, too. Yeah, shout out to Blue. That's always been my people, too. But, like, um, I thought that was so crazy. That's you know what I'm saying? That. Yeah, that was so crazy. Yeah. But, you know, both of those my guys. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah, I'm tight with tight with the whole cast. It's like the first cast that, you, that I'm really like, well, nah, me and Raven was tight. You know, um, anybody pretty much I work with, bro, before, I'm still tight with him, you know? You say Raven who? Raven Simone? Yeah, Raven Simone. Like, me and Raven Simone was real tight. Did y'all, y'all, y- um, what did y'all work on? I'm, I'm just. We did Dr. Doolittle 2 together. Um, yeah. Damn, this nigga wasn't. <laughs> uh, me yeah, and, um, I seen, you know, me and, me and Omar Gooden, Cuba Gooden. Like, I did Fighting Temptation with Omar and Cuba. Um, Beyonce? I'm real cool with, I'm, I'm, yeah. Hey, man, yeah. bro been flexing on us all interview. No, no but I like, like how he like, was yeah, a natural because like, he was raised talk, in the like, game. No, but you yeah. can really, all like, movies. me and Akon was just together not too long ago. That's my big bro. Shout out to Khan. You know, and everybody that know me know I've been this way, man. One thing I ain't, I, I'm a lot of things. One thing I'm not is a liar, bro. I'm not a liar, bro. I'm for, and I'm very, very business-minded, bro. I get to it, bro. Like, okay. whatever it take, we going to get to it. Like, you ain't never... I ain't gonna say you ain't never seen me out here bumming because it's times where I have my times because I, I might be stacking up for something. I right. gotta wear dirty. I gotta wear the same pair of socks for three days. Like, I understand the end game though. Right. I learned that from y'all. Like, it don't matter what you're doing today. It's like, I'm looking at 10 days from now. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? I'll slum and make everybody laugh at me today <laughs> to pull up in that Bentley next week. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, you know, but that's what I just been, I got my hands in everything though, man, and I stay connected. Like, um, you know, with the water, Akon building a city out there in Florida. Mm. I'm trying to, who you think need to, in, 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 in five years, I, Africa be important in water, bro, because yeah. the water out there is so bad. So I'm already putting together a plan to import my water out there to Africa. I'm going to be selling gallons of water, buckets of water, tons of water man, to Africa. Need, man, you need to give your water to the corner boys, man. I'm going to give it to the corner boys, too. You know what I'm saying? Like, during the summertime, the corner boys will go crazy. Man, shout, man That's any, any water boys in Atlanta, <laughs> man, come. I got to work out a deal with the water boys, too, because, like, I could do. I can get them a better deal than, than they getting with. You got this. Than Costco? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, can give them, I can give them a better deal than Costco. You know what I'm saying? We are the source. You know what I mean? Shout out to my to my plug, man. So what, you know what who you are. Water, where does the water come from? The water come from Chatsworth, Georgia. We home base, you know. Since we back on the water, we home base, and um, shout out to my plug, and we, you know, we sitting on thirty acres, you know, thirty acres of, of fresh alkaline spring water. We pump a million gallons of water a day. We only using five percent, so that's why I'm trying to get mm. Africa. I'm trying to get Africa involved, all those states like that. So I'm really deep in the water, man. Really deep in in, in the in the business of it, and you know, water made forty three point billion, like forty three point three billion last year. Mm. If I can get three percent of that, bro, I need that. You know what I'm saying? Like, but at the same time, it's something good for the people. I remember, I remember one time Future was telling me he had invested money in selling water at one time. Like he was really like selling water. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. And water is big though, because one thing about it, people people are gonna buy water. Yeah, they're gonna saying? buy water. Like, like that's why we was like, yeah, just get some water. I was like, shit, I buy the water anyway. I, I'm gonna drink it anyway. Like I never thought I'd be selling water, bro. Like I did a lot of things in life. 
but like water's been different. And then, but it's it's great to do some, bro. People get so excited about this bottle, bro. Like the bottle's more famous than me. Okay. You know what I'm saying? When I go to the, when I go to places and I'm and I'm got the water, the girls like, can I take a picture? I'm like, yeah, sure. They's like, no, with the bottle. Mm. I'm like, oh shit. Oh, say it ain't me, it's the water. It ain't me, it's the water. That's what's up. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I'm like, it's the water. Like, you want to, can I take a picture? I'm like, yeah, sure, I'm ready. She's like, no, with the bottle. And I'm like, damn. You know what I'm saying? Like, but it's cool because the women just love the bottle, man. It's sexy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They could grab it. You know what I'm saying? It's just something you, you could walk around like, you, could, you know? He's excited about that <laughs> shit. Look, here. He is. No, say it resembles. It resembles the, I can shot. Yeah, water, because like shot, to me, water, and I'm, I'm, I'm being honest, being that I'm sober, Drinking is psychological. Yeah. Yo, if you drink this like this right now, dog, you you kind of feel like you. Yeah, because I'm watching you do it. Yep. <laughs> like that look right. kind of cool, huh? I'm like, yeah, you like he turning that shit up. <laughs> I want them to really see this bottle too. Like, ladies, listen, ladies, this what you want to be drinking. Tell your man don't bring you none of that, none of that other stuff. You know what I'm saying? So I don't even want to give them no props right now. <laughs> Tell them, hey. I'm only drinking with Lil Zane drinking, cause so, he know what's up. Tell him to bathe in it, cause he know what's up. You gotta you know bathe in that water. Hey, tell him I, well, you want. Tell your man for Valentine's, you want your whole bath water yeah. filled up with alkaline, unwind water. Damn, nigga, I got she can unwind. She got wait a whole another year. I need the whole bathtub with warm <laughs> alkaline, unwind water. Light the candles. She yeah, gonna unwind. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. Look, I'm with you. Look, at yeah, you. man, so, yeah. So listen, so let's talk music now. Okay. Um, musically. What are you doing, man? You started out in the music business. I know yeah. that once it's in you, it's, 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 it ain't on you, it's in you. Man, listen, man. Again, I was raised by the best. You know what I'm saying? I was I'm, raised by I'm, the I'm best. I'm on it, bro. I, I, love I, never, it. I, never, I love to keep hearing you say I that. Never stopped, I never <laughs> stopped doing music. Every day you thought, oh, what is he doing? I'm probably in the studio. I just knew this, man. I didn't want to be like the rest of these people, you know what I'm saying, just trying to come back doing something. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like... If I would have just jumped back in the music game, like people would be like, oh, he's trying to do something. Like, I just wanted to come back and stamp my name as a star before I even got back to the music. So that's why I jumped into BMF and we on Gutter, we in Boxed In with Regine, shout out to Regine. But, and so people know, okay, he already got a platform again. Now it's time to introduce him to the music. But I've been doing music, how long it been since they heard something from me, like a couple of years? Well, imagine if every day I've been doing music. So I'm about to start releasing music. I'm on a different vibe though. Like my whole vibe now is just like, I'm just doing me, man. You on some grown man shit or gangster I'm on some, shit? I'm on some grown. I ain't on no gangster shit. I'm not. I ain't, I ain't no gangster. You're like, you a lover. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, a, I'm lover. a. I'm a. I'm a. I'm a lover boy. I'm a lover boy. You know what I'm saying? True to the art. My dad was a G, so I'm a G okay. to the fullest. You know what I'm saying? That, like, I wanted to hear that out of you. Like, man. I gotta, I gotta be. I'm gonna have to give you some G shit. Like, I'm. If you go get my first album, I'm cussing up a storm. I'm, <laughs> I'm talking about can my partners come along too? They want a bone too. I'm getting money on. They getting money on my song too. You know what I'm saying? I'm running trains on holes. I'm, I'm doing everything. I always been the I always been the guy's guy. You gotta understand. Right. If you get my yeah. first album, I was a guy's guy. Okay. I got a song called Partners Come Along. Mm. Ain't no nigga made a song like that yet. The chorus was, Can my partners come along too? They want a bone too. They making money on my song too. You know what I'm saying? All around the world, it's the same me and pretty women spend game trying to get up in them. I want to know, can my partners come along too? They want a bone too. They get money on my song too. You know what I'm saying? Like, Damn, I always no been man. a people's player. Like, yeah. I always been my homeboy. Like, I, I hate when people single me out. Oh, I want him. He's the famous mm -hmm. one. I used to be like, yo, my partner's hard too. Right. What you mean? My matter of fact, matter of fact, I ain't want you. You got to be my partner. Hello. Where your friend at? Well, nigga like them alley-oops back in the day. I right? used to give niggas crazy alley-oops. <laughs> Call any nigga on this that built me. I crazy alley-oop. Ain't no fun that the homies can't handle. We had tons of girls, so it was more like <laughs> I wanted the girl that wasn't paying me no attention at first. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, if you just single me out because I'm the nigga on TV, I'm the nigga with the money, I'm the nigga, boom. Then I'm like, nah, my partner's, my partner do beats, my partner on my, on my hook. You hey. know what I'm saying? And my niggas can tell you that. You feel me? You feel me? You like so it's like so that's the type that's the type thing I was on. Like I was always, you know, the, but the nicest person ever. You know right. what I'm saying? Like I still stay I'm I'm yeah, I was so, probably what, what, wow, but I was the smooth the coolest nigga ever. You know what I'm saying? As I'm listening to you too, bro, and I and I want to ask you this like for real. I'm hearing you are a very loyal person. 
Of course. Do you do you think your loyalty might have been part of the problem too? Definitely was part of the problem. Definitely was part of the problem. Cause it sounded like you you. I remember I remember being at K Wells house. I gotta go back. I remember being at K Wells <laughs> house, and I had Boo with me, Akon's brother. Okay. And he was like, "This nigga gotta go." I'm like, "He gotta go." That's my best friend, bro. I'm working with Con at this time. I'm like, "That's my best friend." He's like, "I didn't gotta go." I was like, "Well, if, I, if he gotta go, I gotta go too, dog." And I got up to leave, and he was like, "Ah, oh, fuck it, y'all both can stay." Mm. It was shit like that I was dealing with, dog. Niggas trying to keep me from my friends and shit, dog. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but see, to me, that's real stand up shit. But stand up shit doesn't translate to the entertainment business, right? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Like they, everybody in the industry say they want stand up niggas. You come sign us, niggas, because we straight from the hood. We real. Yeah. But then when niggas show you that real shit and show you that you want loyalty, but you ain't letting me show you loyalty. Not real loyalty. You don't want you to be loyal to them. Yeah. Yeah. I was loyal to Khan and them. Right. When me, A Akon Akon was the was the original nigga that did calling me. Akon did my biggest record calling me. Mm-hmm. That nigga Akon did the beat and was on the chorus. K Wells came in and was like, no, I need my niggas to produce the beat and I need 112 on the chorus. I ain't mad. Even though he was putting 112 on the chorus, you know what I was doing? Man, fuck that, man. I want Akon. That's my nigga. This nigga giving me 112. They just gave me anywhere. I'm still fighting for Akon. Mm. Then one day I was in the studio sleep, mixing my album mad. I'm mad. Let me, these niggas ain't let me do nothing I want to do. And then I heard that, and it woke me up. I was like, oh shit, that shit hard. Mm-hmm. So I went from hating the song because they took my nigga off, my loyalty. I hated that shit because they took my nigga off. Even though he giving me 112, another nigga, the track was even, mm-hmm. the track they gave me was even harder than Khan's. I ain't gonna lie, but I was just so stuck on this, my nigga. Like, right. But then when I was asleep and that shit came on, it woke me up. I felt it in my soul. This it, dog. That was the one. And I went back and told K Wells, hey, bro, I apologize. I'm with that shit. He like, what, what you think? Instead of saying, okay, I'm just like, look, bro, I woke up, I felt it. Like, it woke me up. Like, this is it, nigga. I feel good about it, nigga. Like, this is it. I ain't, this is it. I feel, I see what you see now. Mm-hmm. I'm able to do that to this day. I'm able to still see your point of view. Mm-hmm. Nigga can't see my point of view, bro. Like, I can see yours. I don't want to be around. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, go both ways. You got to be both ways with this shit. You can't be signed to a label and they like, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. And you're like, well, I want to do this. And they're like, nah, that's good. It's like, let me try my way and if it don't work, but if we try your way and it don't work, let me try my way. Niggas still want to just try their way every time. That's what all labels, that's not just what, that's not directed towards anybody. That's what all labels, that's what artists still go through nowadays that's signed to a label. So let me ask you this, right? Because the music business, we know what that is. Yeah. It's everything that you just described. That is the music business. Right. I don't want nobody to get it fucked up and twisted. Right. Right. This is not the only story we hear about this. This is what it is. Moving into Hollywood and transitioning into acting, right? I feel like it's got to be different because it's still entertainment business, right? And I know there's bullshit involved, but when you're coming into the game and you're doing that, and you're now you're new, you know the you're jaded from the music business. You go to pick an agent. How does that work? What are the differences that you feel like is is different than the music business when you're going to acting? You know, business wise. Um, again, bro. I'm, I'm I always like you know I'm a good guy. You know what I'm saying? I got with an agent. You know what I'm saying? I. To this day, me and her still cool. Holly Davis, you know what I'm saying? He gonna uh, say a name. That's y'all fuck with this. Holly Davis, hey, we still cool. What's up, Holly? Hey, he put I, I love you. I love you, Holly. I love you. She just called. She. I just show you a text right now. Somebody tried to. Somebody. It was a situation that happened, and I got my audition in late. And I normally never get my audition in late, but I really wanted this audition, and. When I sent it in, my agent was like, yo, it's too late, they don't wanna see it. But I knew Holly was on that, was on, was an executive producer on it. I still didn't get the role, cause they went, they had whatever they had to do. But I called Holly and was like, hey Holly, I'm gonna be a little late on my audition. I had already called her ahead of time. I'm gonna be a little late on my audition, cause I've been running around, but um, they, I'm gonna send it in to you, I promise you. And she was like, I'm glad you called me, I'm looking forward to it. So then when my agent told me they didn't take it, I called her back and I was like, well, I sent it in. Like, like I told you, well, they didn't take it. She was like, let me make a call, boom, 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 because I wanted to see that personally. And I was like, I don't want to step on nobody's toes, but you know, I normally wouldn't do this. I normally just take the L, 
But yeah. I felt like, damn, bro, like. So was Holly your original agent? Is what yeah, she was the first agent that ever gave me a deal. Like she turned me from an actor, I mean, an artist to a rap to an actor, a rapper to an actor. Word. She she did my. I say that because she did my first deal for like Finding Forrester. I was in I was in the movie with Sean Connery, Buster Ryan. It was my first movie ever. That's that. the movie I got from the McDonald's. The Finding Force. You didn't let me finish the name of the movie, man. Oh, my bad, bro. That's why I don't do interviews. I'm out, dog. I'm out, dog. That's what I'm here for. That's why I don't even do interviews, because I got too much to talk about. It's like, we'll be here forever, bro. It's like, you know what I'm saying? But it's all real shit. I'm enjoying it because you are really educating me on a lot of shit you did that. Like, bro, I I do follow. Holly started Usher. Holly started started Mm. Master P. Holly started Romeo. Mm. Holly started all the rappers turned actors, and I was one of the first. Like, so, but I just took it and ran with it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you did a great job, though, bro. Like, I, I could have did bullshit. a million reality shows. I just chose not to because yeah, I'm a real actor. Don't do that. Like, I had to make a choice. I turned down millions of dollars, dog, just to just to. So stand, why not? Stand so, so, so why not do reality TV because when it's they, when it's, because, when it's because, paying good? Because messy, because they didn't. In the acting business, I felt like, and then now it's starting to open up with the people that's doing it now. Now that, like I said, the internet makes it more even playing field. And right now it's all about followers. Right now it's not even about, you see a nigga in the lead role because he got five million followers. It's not because he he really that nigga. You know what I'm saying? Or she really that girl. It's because the followers. So a lot of that. But before that, Mm -hmm. before that, it was about strictly just like, you know, the real acting skills. You get what I mean? So do you think, like, even with what you do now, you could take your skills and do, like, I see, like, a lot of people not, like, like, you have a following with hip-hop as well, but you see, like, a lot of people doing, like, the hip-hop. I mean, like, they do, like, the Instagram shorts, the reels, like, and people really making a lot of money from that. No, I'm with that. I'm with that because that's a chance to show your um, your talent. Like, I do, I do, I'm on TikTok popping. I got millions of views on TikTok. Like, I'm, I'm hip. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I'm hip, skip. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm on TikTok. You know what I'm saying? I'm on Facebook. I think I got like 150 on Facebook. Okay. I got like 100 something followers on Instagram. I'm considered an influencer. I'm an okay. Influencer. All right. That, that's you know what, what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking more. about. I'm an influencer. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? Put some respect on my influence. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know I'm an influencer. You know, but, you know, I never cared about none of that. You know what I'm saying? Like, but really it's just, you know, it's just I'm 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 out there, man. Like I'm so, out so are you are you single right now? Who me? I mean, listen, man. I'm 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 happy. Okay. We're here to talk about my business. Okay. Not my personal life. You know what okay. I'm saying? Like I just need training. I like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like like like. I just like, know you've been on TV. You know you, no, you know no. you. I'm always on TV. I've been on TV my whole life, ex, because of you, man. It's blame. I blame it on you, ex. <laughs> Don't blame me. <laughs> I'm <on> this <laughs> way. I'm this way because yeah, yeah. of this nigga, yeah, nigga. dog. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? My first, my first joint, my first joint I smoked was outside of his studio at Dark. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like but listen, my bro. first joint I smoked. You from, know what from I mean? that, from and we smoking right now. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah, you know I stay smoking. That's <laughs> come on now. Stop playing. Him. Come on now. Ever since you was a kid. Come on now. <laughs> come on now. <laughs> but listen, bro. I, I'm I'm amazed that uh, like when you sitting there telling me these stories, even with me, I've been knowing Akon for a while. I never shout out Akon. Really I love knew. that guy. I never really knew you guys even rock like that. You know what I'm saying? And even with Boo, so just sitting here hearing those stories made me go, wow, bro, you really had your hands on the pulse of, like, you got to really think of how big Akon is, bro. Super like, huge. Like, you talking, you talking about Akon like he like your neighborhood partner right bro, now. Bro, this nigga battle Usher and one for real. It's my nigga. You know what I mean? It's my nigga. Yeah. That's Usher was, me and Usher was like this before before we um before we both blew up. I got pictures up right on my, right on my page right now. Me and Usher, nigga. Me and Usher, we, he at my house, nigga. Mm-hmm. We playing high and go seek. Fuck, That's crazy. What you talking about, bro? Like, I'm really, you know, niggas try to erase my name out the, out the books, man. Like, I feel like when Atlanta mention Atlanta, they don't mention me. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, I really feel like I'm just, like, on the own planet myself. That's why I go so hard. Like, you know what I'm saying? Do you still feel like you got something to prove? Hell yeah, I feel like I got something to prove. You know what I'm saying? Like... I'm just competitive like that, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? But it's really the pool to myself, not to nobody Cause, else. Because even when I'm listening to what, <clears> you, <throat> what you've done, bro, I'm, I'm I'm so impressed. I'm like, you don't really have anything to prove. You've done it. Listen. When you think about from a rap from a from a rapper to an actor and and all the roles you played over the years, you know how many rappers and people right now would love 
to have that resume? Niggas try to play me, right? But niggas know. <laughs> but niggas know they would love to be in my position. Yo, dog. yo, 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 yo. Fuck the niggas. I'm talking nah, about your talk resume. About like your resume is bigger than the niggas you. You did about. have a Tupac verse, right? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, dog. Show the camera that. Please get who that. Listen. Who that? Who that, that is, right there? That's Usher and Zane with. That nigga at my house with little box fades. <laughs> that nigga at my house. We were still cool. We we cool like that. I talk to his brother all the time. Shout out to Jay Lack. That's my dog. That's my real family. You know what I'm saying? You know what my favorite part of this interview is? This is why I love this show, bro. It because niggas like you who don't get to say what they need to say, get to say it. Because I be trying to charge my interviews. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yo, yeah, yeah. Well, we niggas water. don't want to interview me because I be charging like like it's like this because I feel like I'm finna give you some shit you ain't never heard, nigga, and you wouldn't even be trying to talk to me, nigga, if I wasn't popping right now. Story's important. It is. When I was begging three years ago for you to interview me, niggas didn't want to hear nothing. You know what I'm saying? So but I be nigga, fair. I ain't have a show. No, this I ain't talking about you. <laughs> I ain't talking about you because this bro, like again, if you know my loyalty, my loyalty is always with the niggas that. Show me love. If K Wells need me to do something right now, nigga, I'm gonna do it. But guess what I'm gonna do while I'm doing it? Cuss his ass out. But do right. it anyway. Yeah. But I'm gonna do it, nigga. Cause that's how I am. You get what I'm saying? And I don't hold nothing back. I don't cause I'm cause I'm real with this shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Niggas respond and say shit and I don't respond. Sometimes nigga, I hear niggas say some shit and I don't even respond because I wait till I meet him, cause I know a nigga gonna change his mind when he meet me. <laughs> right. Cause like, bro. When you meet me, nigga, I'm lit, nigga. What you talking about? And I'm so real with this shit. Like, I'm so honest. So, so how did here with it? So how did um, 50 embrace you? Mm. Me and 50, I don't, my version, you got to interview him to know how. But I believe everything. First of all, I told my nigga in 2015, I seen 50 do something. I think it was when he started fucking with Mace. And I said, um, I turned to my dog. I said, yo, 50 going to be the one to put me on, dog. This is another. I'm for six now. I'm for seven now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, how many, I turned how many to my best now? friend. He's six I turned one, to my usher, best friend. It's it. almost six like I'm psychic, one, dog. Hey, bro. <laughs> it's almost like I'm psychic, dog. I said, yo, ask Big D. I said, yo, follow at Next to Blow Record. That's my dog. I'm always shouting my dogs out. You know what I'm saying? At Next to Blow Record. But I turned to my dog. I said, bro, 50 going to be the one to put me on. I said, I feel it. He had cancer like me. He like the underdogs. Mm. He was like, this nigga tripping. I said, all right. Boom. Right? Yeah, you feel you peeping that. Now remember that right That's there. 2015. So now my cousin, 50 start coming in town for the BMF shit. Mm -hmm. I don't know they shooting BMF at this time. Remember, they auditioned for BMF two years before they started even shooting it. At Lucky Land. It was like a fake audition and then a real audition. They had an audition sign. Did you see that one? No, I didn't see that. Right? <laughs> boom. Right? So boom. Anything that everybody got access to, I don't even want that shit. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That's how I live life. If everybody got access to it. I don't want that shit. Correct. I'm very like. Correct. If Exclusive. Yeah, if everybody, if you everybody nigga, I don't want to be your nigga, dog. <laughs> you got to have some enemies. Fuck with me, bro. I need that. You got to have somebody you don't fuck with. That's right. I don't fuck with everybody. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Not love. enemy, not enemies, but really just some niggas you don't fuck with. Like, You'll love us. Yeah. You ain't got to be, you ain't got to not, you got to talk about them. I, like, I don't say nothing. Mm -hmm. I say I don't say nothing unless I got something good to say. Right. I don't say, I don't talk down about people. But if you ask me something, I'm going to tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. So let's get back to 50. Let's we'll get, get back. It. Now remember that. We're yeah. going to go back to that. Now right. 50, boom. My cousin's man, my cousin's rolling with him. 50 has his real security. Mm -hmm. the, the niggas you don't want to fuck with, the sniper niggas. Pop, pop, pop. You know what I'm saying? But he also got them gangster niggas with him too. And the gangsta niggas he have with him is my cousins and them too when they come to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We're going to keep them niggas un. We're going to keep them niggas under no un, un, wraps. On we don't put no address on that. But my cousin will bring me around 50 all the time. Yo, I'm, I'm rolling with 50 and them today. Pull up. Mm -hmm. So I just be the little nigga in the corner. 50 be like, what's fuck little Zane? What's up, nigga? And I just be like, what up, Fifth? Mm -hmm. Wouldn't be much. But he would see me with niggas all the time that he know is with the business. You know right. what I'm saying? And I guess I feel like that played a part into when I did my role, you know what I'm saying? And when I auditioned, whatever, I feel like yeah. it was kind of like I already be seeing the nigga anyway. So you didn't just get the role, right? you actually auditioned. I auditioned. And I had I had worked with Tasha Smith before I did 
um, BMF on a movie called When Love Kills with um, Lance Gross and Lil Mama. <laughs> Yeah, Tell me one. The resume is yo. I'm in. I'm in. Win loves kills. Yo, my nigga, you work. I play the DJ in there. I'm a DJ in there. Shout out to the DJs. Hey, hey. I play a DJ hey, in yo. there. I play a DJ in there. So, you know, um, I'm in the part where Lil Mama come out in the club when she first come out to dance on the dance on um, Lance Grow. Lance Grow. Shout out to Lance. Just my dog. Hold up. Say that movie again. It's called Win Love Kills. Remember Lance Gross played the pimp. Yeah. Lil Mama was yo, the um, tell dancer. You, tell you a quick story about that. Tell me. That actual story, I actually know Smokey. Yeah. That was her brother that got killed. Wow. Smokey was a dancer at Jazzy T's. Her right. brother met two dancers that was dancing at, at uh, Dancers Elite. Dang. And they were two girls that was going around killing dates that they would, they would actually go out on dates with dude, but the pimp would tell them to actually kill the person they went out on a date with, like you either robbed yeah, or yeah, killed Yeah, 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 true story. And if it was having sex with them, the girls had AIDS. And she was the first. She was the first. The girl. She was the first girl on death row. She was. She was the first young. She was the youngest girl on death row at eighteen. That's yeah. what this movie was based on. Yeah. Damn. But this ain't that loud. Love yeah. kills. When when life. I was kills. happily a part of that. Shout out to Tasha <laughs> Smith. So it's like so the roots go deep, man. Um, and me and Tasha being loyal again. Um, I had. I'm gonna be real. I had one line in the movie. I had one. Now I done played supporting roles. I done played big roles. I done been in movies with Eddie Murphy. Sean Connery, mm. by, um, um, Cuba Gooding Jr., Pop Monique. It. I'm popping. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you how this came about. This is my hustle, bro. I'm gonna, and then I'm going to get out of here if y'all want to kick me out. This is my hustle, though. So I called my agent. I hear about them doing When Love Kills. I called my agent. I said, yo, all my niggas in that movie. Lil Mama, Lance Gross, Tasha Smith love me. Call them, see if, if I got a role. I can get a role in there. He called me back like a day later, said, ain't going to happen, Captain. I said, boy, are you playing? I said, let me do my own research. So I DM, I find out who the executive producer is. I don't even know this lady. Shout out to Tia Smith. <laughs> I love you, Tia. So I talked to Miss Smith, and I, I DM Miss Smith. I don't know this lady for nothing. I said, how you doing, Miss Smith? My name is Lil Zane. I was on such and such. I'm typing this. I'm on, I, was, I, was, I played Dr. Doolittle, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> I know me don't do this, and I do have an agent, but I just I wanted to reach out personally and tell y'all I just really want to work with y'all. I don't give I don't care if it's small, big role. I just want to be able to say I'm in this movie. Mm -hmm. I said, is there any room for me? She hit me right back. Sure, there is. <laughs> I have my people contact you in the morning. Mm. Eight and one. So my agent called me the next day. Boy, I got it. Hey, hey, boy, I got you that role. They, they actually called back. <laughs> you think we can get he the ten wins? He's just now finding out right now that I know he didn't get me that role. Mm. <laughs> oh, you never said nothing. Hey, what's up, Chris? What's up? What's up, Tay? You know what I'm saying? Cap, like, cap, 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 cap. You know cap, what I'm cap, saying? Cap. He just finding out in this interview right now. He, you know, I know he didn't get me that role. But guess what I did? I still gave him his percentage. Wow. Because he a real nigga. Bro. Because See? I'm a real nigga, dog. He helped me on other shit, so. I don't matter if you get the work, I get the work. As long as I know you believe in me and you working for me, we gonna get money. See, you know and that go saying? and that go back to that loyalty we was talking you about. You know what I'm saying? These real stories. So I never told him to this day, to the interview right now, that I knew. He called me like, got you, boy. Hey, I called him back and I, I talked to him and <laughs> I'm like, <"What's laughs> They love you. They I love said, you. I said, for sure, dog. That's mm. my dog. Appreciate you, dog. I love you, bro. We're gonna get this money. Click and waited for him to do it. He ain't, he ain't about nothing else. Mm. But I knew that was going to be, it was one line, too. I was like, y'all give it up for such and such. That's all it was, nigga. But you in it. Fuck you talking about. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? You in it. And they ain't all cut it the was. Scene. But niggas like, nigga, at one line, they laughing. But I'm yeah. in the corner practicing like this. Give it up for such and such. Give it up for such and such. Give it up for such and such. I'm in that motherfucker yeah. trying to do that shit a million ways. And guess who see me in the corner going hard? Tasha. This she mm. like, that nigga crazy. That nigga rehearsing this shit like he got 80 lines. Mm. That one line I gave him, he and that motherfucker trying to get it. So when she said action, I said, give it up for such and such. They're like, well, shit, we got it. We don't need to do nothing else. It was one take Jake, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> but she said, she was like, damn, you went so hard that when I seen your audition come up for BMF, because guess what? When my agent, I had quit acting. I got tired of being fucking denied, bro. At mm. the When Love Kills, it took me forever to book something. 
I got tired of fucking being denied. It was killing my, it was fucking with my spirit, bro. So I said, fuck that. I'm going to start writing my own movies. Mm. So in 2017, I started writing my scripts. I got 30 scripts to this day, mm. right? I started writing my scripts. Mm. I started being around comedians. I was hanging out at the Atlanta Comedy Club where I do all my shows at now. Loyalty, nigga. And I started seeing all these dope ass comedians that I knew was never going to see a paycheck ever. <laughs> Unless I wrote them some shit. Because I say it's too many of y'all niggas. Everybody can't be in a movie. Right. But I'm going to write a movie for y'all niggas. So I started writing my first comedy. Then it turned to a drama. Then it turned to boom, boom, boom. So I got tired of waiting for niggas to put me on. So I started, I wrote a TV show called Almost Out. Mm. About a seven-man heist crew. I'm finna shoot this shit. I done went and hustled my little money up. I'm not finna shoot this shit. January 15th, nigga, I'm shooting this shit. I got 30 niggas at my house doing table readings, dog. I'm like, I'm finna do this shit. I get a call from my agent. He like, hey, I know we ain't worked in about two years. You still acting? <laughs> <laughs> he asked me if I'm still acting. I said, bitch, I'm making my own shit now. Fuck that shit. I said, yeah, but I'm acting. I'm just playing. I said, yeah, I'm acting, dog. And he like, well, look, I got this thing that you might be good for, man, but you're going to have to get some new pictures and shit. I'm like, man, again, dog, these niggas just go spend all this money on new pictures. It's $300 for pictures. Go spend all this money for new pictures just for them niggas to say, nah, we'll pass. I said, man, you sure? He said, man, just go get the pictures, man. So I go take some pictures. I pay a nigga 300 to take the pictures. He fly all the way in from New York. Mm -hmm. He take the pictures. The pictures is horrible. I sent him to my agent. He like, I can't work with these. I can't get jiggy with this shit. He tell me that, right? So I'm like, so you saying I got to go get more pictures? So I had to go spend another 300 with my man, um, Dwayne Boyd. What up, Dwayne? You know what I'm saying? Dwayne hooked me up, gave me some great headshot. I finally sent them in. I remember I'm 600 in the hole, and I feel like I ain't even going to get this shit. So I had to do the audition for Saki. It was like, man, I ain't even, I don't even why they, I don't, I don't know why they um hired this country ass bitch anyway. That was the line, right? <laughs> I went in that motherfucker, I told my girl, turn the camera on. And I be, you got to self tape because it's COVID at this time. So I did that shit one time. I said, man, such, 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 All right, send that shit in, man. She said, you ain't going to do it again? I said, hell no, nah, shit probably ain't going to see nothing anyway. Sent it in, dog. Them niggas like that shit. <laughs> Nine and one. It's nine and Bruh, one. Went in there like I didn't even give a fuck about it, and they liked it. Mm. So that taught me not to give a fuck no more. Excuse my language. I don't know if I cuss. Yeah, you it can. Taught me not yeah. to care no more. Too late. Like, now. <laughs> even when you could cuss, I, I, I try not to cuss, but it taught me not to care no more. It's like if it's for you, it's for you. That's yeah. for anything. What God got for you is gonna be for you. That's for anybody out there that's hustling, because I know it's somebody out there right now that auditioned a hundred thousand times and ain't getting nothing. Your time is your time. Just keep it going, cause. I auditioned like a thousand. I got 2,000, 3,000 no's to get that one big yes. You know what I'm saying? And I took the opportunity. But I really did it one time. I usually take two hours on each audition. Mm. I try to perfect it. Like, I don't try to work too hard because if you think too hard, you ain't going to get it. But I try to work, at least get myself an hour to study it, to study mm. the lines, and then an hour to put myself on tape. I might do it four or five times. And I go back and me and my people look at it, send it to my agent, see if she like it. I did that shit one time and sent it in, dog. I didn't think I was going to get it. I didn't give a fuck. But my character was supposed to not give a fuck. So it worked. I had the right attitude. That's right. And it worked out for you. Bam. But then when I got it, that I don't give a fuck turn to be so grateful because I really did give a fuck. I was just tired of just. You but I'm going to tell you what happened. It, pus it postponed, postponed my shit because... I was about to shoot on the 15th of January. They told me I got to shoot BMF on the 21st of January. So I had to postpone my shit, but it was like God giving it to me, like saying, okay, nigga, I see you going so hard to do your own shit. Now I believe in you. Now I'm going to give you some shit. Mm -hmm. Boom. And I still ain't shot that shit I'm sh that I was supposed to shoot because now my mind is bigger. I was finna take 15,000 and shoot it, but now I'm around millions. So now it's like, don't. Rush it. Do yeah, it you could develop a bigger picture now. Do it now. correctly. Yeah. I, I got rights to a story right now. Shout out to my dog. Shout out to my dog, Sean Blanche. Sean Branch. If you watch Vlad, Sean Branch, Teflon. Teflon Sean. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to DC. 
Y'all ever heard of DC Teflon, Sean? You want to pull him up? Right? You want to pull him up? Boom. <laughs> this my this my guy. I look just like him. We look like we could be twins. You better play him in a movie. He called. I'm with Dave Chappelle. Shout out to Dave Chappelle. I'm with Dave Chappelle and T.I. kicking it all night. Flex. Oh, I'm with Dave Chappelle and T.I. kicking it all night. Just a regular Thursday. Yeah, a regular On a regular Thursday. 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 Yeah, and Dave Chappelle, main man, country, shout out to Country King. You notice I notice to keep names. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I talk to these niggas every day. Shout out to King, shout out to Country. We doing big shit right now. And I say, yo, I'm chilling. I'm over here. I'm talking, doing something. The country come and hit me. He say, yo, what's your name, dog? He didn't even know who I was because I look different. He like, yo, you look like my mans that we about to do this TV show with. He showed me a picture of the nigga. He say, I say, oh shit, it look like me. He's calling nigga, he called a nigga on the phone. He showed a nigga me on FaceTime. Look at that. Oh, you do like that nigga. Look, look at that nigga. <laughs> he showed a nigga me on FaceTime. He bug out, like, yo, he look like me. Y'all want you to play me in this joint. Then he say, I want to bring you on as, a, as executive producer, producer to help me build this. So I'm like, boom. So we shopping the script now. We shopping the pitch day now. So this going to be my next true story. You know what I'm saying? 10 and 1. Sean Branch, Sean Branch, Sean Branch, the only nigga that got, that got acquitted for nine murders before he was 23. God. Nigga, ten, acquitted for nine. 10 victories. <laughs> In the hour. Sean Branch, the only nigga that got acquitted for nine murders with the yeah. same lawyer by the age he was, by the time he was 23. The 10th murder, he got convicted. The 10th murder, he got pent on him. He went to jail for 25 years. He didn't even do it. His man came to the court and told the judge he did it. The judge said, don't worry about that. We got who we want. Mm. Ooh, he did 25 crazy. years to the door, just got out. Teflon Sean. So we putting this story together. Shout out to D.C. There's never really been a story about D.C. done. You got New York. You got Alpo and them, but remember Alpo and them went to DC. Mm -hmm. Uh what's my what's my man name? Rafer Emmons. Uh, um, 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 Rafer, Rafer, Rafer um, Emmons. Uh Rafer Emmons, um, yeah. Demencio. Yeah. This is where the story starts with him and Demencio was tight. Look at how he looked. Now imagine me with a low haircut. This is me. I can show you pictures of me right now. If I put a hat on right now, I look like this nigga. Look at this with the glasses on, bro. Look at this nigga, bro. Look at that nigga, bro. Nah, he do look like that. He do look like him. I ain't gonna hold you. He does look like him. Oh, yeah, yeah, I do look like him. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's you, bro. He seen me and bugged out. That's wild. I'm trying to get Lala Anthony to, to play my mom. I'm getting Cameron to play my dad. Man, do that. Cause I know she's gonna get naked. I'm trying to go. <laughs> hey, if they watching this, I'm going for Vin Reams. I'm going for um, Jacob Lattimore to play Demencio. I got Mano in this. Okay. So I'm oh, putting together, I'm putting together a crap. Paula Patton, I'm coming for you too. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm really, really oh. trying to put these things together, man. I just had a meeting with Maverick. Shout out to Maverick Movies. I flew out on my own dime to, to Miami and I got with Maverick Movies. Maverick just produced the last two movies I was in. Box Office Smashed, um, Boxed In and um Boxed In and um you getting bored, dog? You yawning? You want me to go? Nah, nigga. You sure? You old. I'm old. Oh, okay. It's past my bedtime. <laughs> if, this shit, if this shit ain't lit to you, dog, I can get up out of here, bro. Nigga, oh, nigga, nigga, you know nah, nigga, hey, nigga, you passed my you know bedtime. What I'm nigga. You know what I'm saying? But boom, you know? But well, we lit, man. Nah, it is. You lit. know what I'm saying? But shout out to Maverick, just went out and had to deal with them. And when I walked in, they offered me some water. I'm sitting in the reception office. The lady come out waiting for my meeting to start. I was 15 minutes early. You know what I'm saying? They come out and they're like, man, we help you with some water. I said, no, I got plenty of water. Thank you. The lady said, what you mean? I had my assistant give her a water. I'm sorry, give him a water. What's up, Dean? So, Devin, what's up, Devin? She gave him a water, he opens it, he drinks it. My man Devin go back and get the whole office. Yo, come taste my dog water. So we had a meeting. I pitched my one. I pitched my movies to Maverick. Maverick said, the dude at Maverick said he never seen a person pitch. In 25 years of him being in the business, he never seen somebody pitch a movie as good as I do. And I pitched them six, seven projects in a matter of 10 minutes, mm -hmm. elevator pitches. So then I said, I want to take y'all company to the next level. This nigga been around for 25 years. He looking at me like, what you talking about? I said, I know the niggas that y'all trying to get to. Mm -hmm. I know the 50s. I know the, I know the ushers. I know the, 
if y'all up them budgets a little bit, y'all doing, you know what I'm saying? We can make something happen. We can make something happen. <laughs> and you and then you put it all on me. I'll I get I get Tyrese in here. You know what I'm saying? Like, but you gotta and them niggas is like, yo, let's do it. So, you know, we still working on the deal right now. I probably shouldn't even spoke on it, but this is just things I'm doing. Like, shout out to Maverick. Hopefully it really happens. You know what I'm saying? But I think you're gonna get it because you get them all. But I think I think, you know, seven twelve vodka, you know what I'm saying? It's seven twelve. You know, I just linked up with this company right now, but dude was like, my people told him you should get with Zane. Dude was like, oh, okay, I, mean, I want to meet him, whatever, cool. He had a party. I pulled up at his party. We got lit, nigga, turned up, nigga, mm -hmm. everybody going crazy. He like, okay, now I see what you're talking about. I got to have that nigga with me because mm -hmm. we lit. It's like just naturally lit. I ain't just talking shit. I'm First of all, I'm glad to be on this show. It's amazing. Man, thank you for being here. You know here, what I'm saying? I don't even do any. I didn't even want, honestly, bro. <laughs> I like this interview because I'm able to get it real, keep it real. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't even really like doing interviews, right? Really, niggas call me all the time to do interviews, bro. I say no, bro. Or well, I, I try to charge them some number where I know they're going to say no. Well, I wanted, I wanted you to come because, like I said, bro, I've talked to you, over, you know, a period of time, but we haven't sat down and talked in years. Right. So being honest, this is our first real conversation, and I know in at least 20 years. Thank you, man, and I, and I know that. And, I, and when I see you and I run into you, I feel like, you still see that same kid in me, like, and that's dope. But I'm like, when bro hear what I'm talking about and hear how I'm coming. Oh, yeah, you're a grown-ass man. Hear how I'm coming. <laughs> like, niggas ain't coming like me, bro. I don't got nothing to do with age. ain't got nothing to do with nothing. It's like, you know, I know young niggas. Like he said, Soldier Boy knew what he wanted at a young age. My thing is, <clears throat> we just them type of niggas that we going to be around because we always reinventing at the music. Soldier Boy jumped in the in the in the electronics. Mm -hmm. He done like the same thing I'm doing with the, the water. water. We yeah. come from that cloth. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, so you know, and I appreciate the platform. You know what I'm saying? Back to the music. The music's going great. I got new music out right now. I dropped Life I Live. You know what I'm saying? I dropped. I got I got hella singles out. It's something going weird. I got to get with you on this on this because a lot of a lot of shit like. Some of my music ain't on Apple. A lot of my fans be saying, oh, I can't find it on Apple. So you know how sometimes when you're not with a major, it only hit up on, like it's it, definitely on lock iTunes. Lock in with me. We'll get all that. Yeah, I got to get all, I need. Mean, I really need some. Just being honest on TV, like a lot of people might go to Apple to get my music and it's not there. Like I go to TikTok sometime and I'm like, can't find certain songs. Who, who's distributing it? Um, I, right now it's like, I'm just, I've been focused on, the, honestly though, I've been focused on the acting shit. That's where I come from, the acting, the water. I got a construction company, you know what I'm saying? We building cribs all over Atlanta. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So I've been focused on that, but I'm really, um, I'm really back on the music. I got about five, 6,000 songs and I really want to, you know, I want to do it the right way though. I want to find that. Well, you sitting here with three DJs right now. The right we got, yeah, And we yeah. got a whole army. Like yeah, these days, yeah, but I'm on, I'm on a whole different vibe. Like a lot of niggas when I first came out said, oh, you mind me of pop? Boom, boom. I've always been a fan of pop, but I really took 10 years off of music to really develop a whole new swag. When you hear my swag, you ain't going to even know it's me. Mm -hmm. I sing now. I don't even rap no more. I sing. Uh -oh. I sing. You singing? I mean, I rap and sing. I ain't going to say I just I just sing, but I'm more like an R&B song, an R&B artist right now. I'm like... A uh, uh, thugged out R&B nigga right now, you know what I'm saying? But with a lot of business sense, like, you know, I'm really, but that's what, that's what my wave, I can't wait till y'all hear the new music. It's wavy. The women is going crazy. Okay. Crazy. Well, we well, like I said, we do new music Monday every Monday. I can't wait to go to DJ. new music Monday. So, and it'll go right in, it'll go right in place with what we're doing right now. So, like I, I said. I love it. I love man, it. This yeah, has this been amazing. Be, this has been, been amazing. I've been hiding my music because I really been, I took 10 years off to really develop a style. Um, my boy Big D, shout out to Big D. You know, I told Big D, I like, yo, I want to be the fucking rap Chris Brown. <laughs> I told that nigga that I said 2013. I told him, I want to be the rap Chris Brown. Mm -hmm. But that nigga D knew Thug Young Thug was gonna blow up before Young Thug blew up. He knew Young Rich Homie was gonna blow up. And when these niggas blew up, I was like, yo, you told me them niggas gonna blow. He's like, Z, this where the music going. So I said, fuck it, dog. Find me beats, find, and I want you to write my lyrics for about two years. I'm going to record, but I ain't going to put nothing out. I'm just going to learn the swag, and then I'm going to apply that shit. Because, you know, growing up, I learned how to easily adapt. So I let a young nigga, he's 10 years younger than me, so I let a young nigga teach me this new swag because his, his writing game was crazy. 
And I, my writing game is crazy, but I knew you had to unlearn something. You ever had to unlearn yes. something? Yeah. Multiple when you do times. the same thing over and over and you think you can't learn no more, you stay stuck. I had to unlearn. I'm the nigga, everybody's like, oh, I'm like, damn, I hate the fact I'm selling millions of records, but niggas still trying to say I sound like pop. I want my own style. So I said, fuck it, I gotta work hard to get it. But I had to learn another style. And I admit, just like Baby would admit, oh, such and such is writing my rhymes. I would let such and such write my hooks because his hooks was dope. And I would learn how to sing, sing, sing. I keep singing in the shower. Now, nigga, I play my music. You're going to be like, yo, is that fucking Usher? <laughs> is that Usher? You know what I'm saying? Like, my vocals is crazy. I'm going crazy on them. Like, I ain't just rapping no more. I'm like, I'm singing. Like, I got ballads, bro. I got ballads that'll make you cry, boy. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. So that's a jump. It's like, I got a kick out of people saying you sound like pot now when they hear this new shit. It's like, who I sound like now? I'm excited to hear I'm this excited shit I'm excited to hear this shit. I'm oh, yeah. excited. Yeah, so. We out of here, man. All right, we so out of here, man. Look, Zane, really, it's been dope, man. We learned a lot. Thank you, it's, man. It's learned a lot. You, man. Appreciate Glad you, you got man. To I come, hope y'all enjoyed y'all stuff. Oh, man, I enjoyed. Listen, we got an hour and 30 minutes. We and really enjoyed this interview. Yeah, yeah now. Man. But, but we got to yeah, go overtime you, for the real niggas. Yeah, so you, and, and you put a lot of again, I and you put a lot of knowledge man. out there, too, bro. Straight up. So we outside, man. You already know what it is. DJ Filthy Rich, DJ Smooth, DJ Big X. Before we get out of here, y'all. We on that water. Man, hold up, man. I got a BMF comedy tour, man. I got so much shit moving on. What the BMF stand for? BMF Born Mad Funny Comedy Tour. I yeah. got four of the livest niggas in Atlanta. These are the type of um of co comedians. They open up for Dave Chappelle, Kevin Hart, all these greatest when they come. They're young comedians. I took four young comedians and I put them on tour. We're doing 30 cities. In between the tour, in between each comedian, I come out, I host. We got twerk contests. We having shot contests. <laughs> we having trivia contests. I'm bringing celebrities out. So I, I did this show three times in Atlanta, and I sold out every time. So I got an agent that came. He put me on a 30-city tour. It's called the Born Mad Funny, a.k.a. the BMF tour, the Born Mad Funny. You get it? BMF. I kind of took something that people want to try to put something bad on, and we made it fun. Hey, it was I so like, much gangster. I like the shit. twist you put on it. It was too. so much gangster shit going on on the set. I just wanted to be the little, get a little, add a little laughter to it. So, you know, Born Mad Funny Comedy Tour coming to a city near you. Shout out to my sponsors, you know what I'm saying? And um, it's going crazy right now. We start in April. We'll be on tour from April to July. And um, it's 30 cities. So I catch you in the city near you. It's very funny. Come through, man. Your boy Lil Zane. That's right. Let's go. We outside. Right. We out. Peace. Let's go.